Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So um, we're gonna do some wines that were sent to me and I haven't done I haven't done any of those in a while. I uh, just don't get a lot of wine sent to me, no big deal. Um, if you wanna send wine to me, just email me, mark at 1337wine.com and uh, we can go over how to do that. But um, anyway, so this person, uh, her name is uh, Stephanie Frey, she works for a um, PR company that represents uh, Little, Black, Little Black Dress. And um, so I got an email, and I get a lot of PR emails. Um, most of them are, I don't know why you're sending me an email when I do a wine blog, a wine podcast, and you're sending me something about notebooks for teenagers. Whatever. Anyway, um, so she sent me an email about... Uh, doing like a, it was like, it looked like a press release. I said, well, I don't, you know, I'm not a written blog. I don't just publish press releases, but if you'd like to have me review the wine, I'd be more than happy to do it. So uh, she, she replied back to me and I was like, cool. So uh, she shipped me two wines. Now what's going on here, I'll, I'll kind of go, I'll kind of explain what the deal is, what the promotion is. Um, they've, Little Black Dress is partnered with um, Adley Stump, who, um, is an alum of The Voice, and I, I, I know who I know what The Voice is. Um, I I've, I've seen like a few minutes of of an episode, so I don't know who Adley Stump is. She's a, she's a singer, um, but anyway, they're partnering up, so they're promoting it. Says their favorite wine, so um, so they're let's say. Anyway, they're just partnering up. Let's just put it that way. Um, there's some type of eat, travel, rock video segment highlighting host Kelly Rizzo, Kelly Rizzo and Adley Stump's favorite uh, little black dress wine and food pairings and yada, yada, yada. Um, apparently it's going to be featured. Uh, she wrote a song called Little Black Dress. So it's being featured on iTunes, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, well, you can send me the wine. Okay. So um, Little Black Dress Wine. So let's kind of go over um, what it is uh, or who they are. So there's, um, it started off with a, um, a winemaker. Well, I think, I think this one got her, the email actually gave me a little bit better information than the website. Um, first of all, so if you're not a, if you're not a woman, as it knows you're a man, uh, and you don't know what a Little Black Dress is, it's like, I guess, it's like the ultimate, not the ultimate, it's like the, uh, I guess the all around staple like dress you can wear type of thing, right? So um, anyway, <laughs> um, I'm trying to get, here we go. I'm trying to get to where we talk about. So the company got its name from the iconic little black dress known to be simply timeless, playful, yet elegant and ready for anything at a moment's notice. Way better than I just, just explained it, right? Um, no, this was really, I'll go with the website. Anyway, um, so the person behind, uh, or the, the winemaker, uh, or actually the person behind this is a woman named, um, they, don't, they didn't give her full name over here, huh? Okay, uh, Zita Nelia, or also known as Z, uh, Arcadi, Arcadioc, you know, I actually worked on this Arcadiacono. Ar Arcadiacono. How about that? So, Zidanelia Arcadiacono. All right, now, said that she was born in Texas, raised in Argentina. She's fluent in Spanish and English and a bit of French. Um, she earned an Argentinian National Diploma of Enology while working in the Andes growing region. 
Uh, she served as she served in the cellar at Les uh, Vignerons du Pays de Insurne in France. Yeah, guarantee she can pronounce that way better than I can. Uh, then coming over to California, joined Fetzer Vineyards in Hopland, where she was simply known as Z. Uh, dedicated to the art of balance and complexity. Um, blah blah blah. So. Um, that's about as much of the story of Little Black Dress wines there is. So, uh, so a winemaker has been, you know, been trained in Argentina, uh, worked in France, worked in California. So um, definitely somebody that knows what she's doing when it comes to wine. All right. So um, let's get into the wines themselves. And I'm going to get back to this little timer here so I can actually start that. All right. So... The first one we're going to do is the 2012 Little Black Dress Chardonnay from California. Um, now these are corks, but they, they look like they look like compressed corks. You know, they don't look like they look like. I mean, they're, they're cork. So we're going to use the Coravin. I've already I've already um, expunged the oxygen, but I probably should do it one more time since it was it's been a minute. Anyway. Um, and these wines in general sell for about, I'd say, I think they're around anywhere between six and nine dollars, depending on um, depending on the uh, the location, the whatever store you're buying it from. Both wines, okay. All right. So you plenty of. Plenty of wine in there to taste. So we got two value wines here. It's definitely aromatic because I can already smell it. So that's 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 a good sign, especially when it comes to white wines. We're gonna really coat the glass here. I learned something recently. Sometimes, um, you know. Whether it's at home or in a restaurant, you know that you still get the chemical smell from, from, uh, from your wash. If you use the washing machine or from the soap you use, and I had never really done that with just coating the glass. I just, just you know, just swirled it. But very golden in color. You know, I'm going to dump it and I'm going to pour some more. I, I, I actually think maybe the glass is, is a little bit. Anyway, so uh, I'm trying to get this and another review done pretty quickly. I'm going to watch the Spurs game tonight. Uh, by the time you watch this one, there will be one more game left in the season for the Spurs. And hopefully they have beaten the Rockets for a second time which is Friday night tonight. And then uh, we have, I forgot who is on Sunday, Phoenix. I think it's Phoenix on Sunday and then New Orleans on Wednesday. So hopefully after tonight and, you know, the rest of the next couple of nights, we're, we're in the number two seed in the West. Crazy in the West, man. Like that seems to have been better. So apples, like golden apples, maybe because I see the gold in here. It's like, it felt like it was more aromatic when it wasn't, when my nose wasn't in the glass. Seems like there's a little bit of nuttiness too. Maybe some, uh, cantaloupe rind. And there's something else. Um, I want to say it's a fruit. Just tropical fruits in general, I'd say. So the nose is pleasant.
on the palate. Um, acid is about medium-ish. Um, kind of coats the mouth a little bit. Feels like there's a little bit of creaminess, a little bit of mallow lactic has probably happened with this. Um, I don't know if it's fully mallow or partially mallow. Um, highly doubt it's going to tell me that anything. Do, do, do. It says it's 80% Chardonnay and 20% other complementary white varietals. They talk about vanilla. Yeah, that's what I got. Vanilla. Yeah. Got apple, you got some of the butter, you got some of the popcorn in here. Uh, it, it's, it's a flavorful wine. Um, if it, it, it wasn't completely chilled in the fridge. I did put it in the, uh, I did put it in the wine, the wine fridge for, for a little while. So it's cooler than, than room temperature. Um, I don't know if it's just, I, I'm perceiving a little bit higher alcohol, but no, it's only 13 and a half. So it's not, it's not too terribly high in alcohol, but I kind of feel a little bit of a burn. So You know, for for what it is, for eight dollars, nine dollars, seven dollars, whatever. Um, this is just, you know, it's it's a it's an everyday wine that you're gonna have, you know, on a, a Tuesday night or something like that, or you want to have something to sip on. Um, would not be a wine I would necessarily use with a Corvin because this is this is something you're gonna pop and pour, probably finish the bottle in, in a couple nights. Um, so you can use a vacuum in or put the cork back in and put it in the refrigerator. It'll it'll, it'll keep fine overnight. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it's an $8 bottle of wine. Okay. So, um, it's not bad. Um, if I was looking for this style of wine, uh, for Chardonnay, which is not my preferred style, but I know lots of people like this, so it's not bad. Okay. I, I, you know, I get, I get what the style is and a lot of people like this style. Um, it's, it's, it, it's, it's pretty decent. Okay. Um, I'm not rushing out to the store to buy it, but then again, like I said, it's a personal preference. If I like this style of wine, so let's put it that way. If I like this style of wine and I saw it on the shelf and I wasn't like, my heart wasn't set on anything else. Like I just was like, I know something that I know what kind of quality I'm going to get. I know what kind of flavor I'm going to get. And I know I'm going to spend eight bucks and I'm not going to, I'm not going to feel like I got ripped off. Then yes, I would buy this for what it is. It's a, it's a reasonably priced Chardonnay um, that, that's not bad quality for $8. And, you know, you're, you're not going to be, you're not going to be, um, you're not going to feel like you got ripped off. Okay. Um, I did see some prices in general for Little Black Dress as low as like $5 in some places. So um, <laughs> someone just asked me, where is good Chicago pizza? Let me rebring that down. Where is, oh, we stopped that because that's about to go off. So, where is good Chicago pizza in downtown Chicago, like Michigan Avenue and Wacker? A friend of mine uh, must be visiting Chicago. Well, so let me tell you, it doesn't exist. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I like New York pizza. Chicago pizza is good. If you like Chicago pizza, it's good. Um, what I'm going to tell her is Gino's East, uh, Pizzeria Uno, um, uh, I think there's a Lou Malnati's, uh, downtown. That's pretty good. But you know, Gino's and Pizzeria Uno. And then there was another one I obviously can't remember. So I'll, when I replied or I'll look it up, but any of those, there's three of them, three big ones besides Lou Malnati's, um, Gino's, oh, I forgot the other one, but if you go to any of those three or four, you're not, gonna be, you're not going to be disappointed in the pizza. Okay. I've eaten those pizzas um, fairly often. Pizzeria Uno was like across the street from where I worked. So if I got out of work on an early shift and I decided to go have pizza instead of anything else, then I'd go over there because it was convenient. But uh, Gino's East was pretty good too. Anyway, um, back to the wine. 
you could have this with some cheese wine, a cheese wine, some cheese pizza, if you wanted to do that. So, um, or like, you know, uh, non, non meat pizza, let's put it that way. Um, yeah, I can see like, so like regular pizza, like with, with a, a Hawaiian pizza, this would go well, this would go good with Hawaiian pizza. If you had like, uh, you know, the, the ham and the pineapples or just the pineapples and cheese and a white, and maybe like the white sauce instead of a, instead of a tomato sauce, like a white sauce, like a margarita pizza. I can see this going well with that. Yeah. So basically $8, if you see it on the shelf and you want, you want something that you know you can depend on, it's going to be, it's going to. It's gonna taste okay, or it's gonna taste good, okay? Um, it's not gonna disappoint, you're not gonna feel like you get ripped off. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so let's move on to wine number two. All right. Of course, I should have been doing this. All right. So wine number two, and we're gonna a little like that. Wine number two is also Little Black Dress. Now this is their 2013 Pinot Noir. Probably should have already done that. Uh, again, should be in the same price range as uh, um, six, seven, eight dollars. Again, also donated to me. So for the purposes of for the purposes of being compliant with all the legalese. I did not pay for this wine. I'm only doing two reviews today. I was going to do three, but I'm not going to have time to do that and go to the Spurs game too. So um, anyway, there's a wine that I have in my wine cooler that I really don't remember how I got. I'm pretty sure I didn't get it from, from my Napa trip. However, the winemaker is a winemaker. One of the winemakers are interviewed, but his own label. So what I'll probably do is just ask if he had given it to me because I really don't remember. I feel bad, but um, I actually think I got it last year at Texom. Get one of those friends said, here, have this wine. Okay. We had a bunch of wine around there like here, you can have it. So, um, but because I'm not really sure how I got it, uh, I know I didn't, I'm almost positive I didn't pay for it. I just know who gave it to me. Anyway. So let's hop on to this. So we've got the, like I said, 2013 uh, Pinot Noir. Now let's let's uh, let's see if they've got some information on this. They have the 2011 vintages on their website. So the Chardonnay was the 11 as far as the breakdown. But I'm I'm sure it's going to be majority ca uh, Chardonnay and then other white varietals. This one says 98% Pinot Noir and 2% other complementary red varietals. Um, so again, this is probably going to be, you know, it's a 13 instead of the 11. Um, probably the same thing. Probably vast majority is Pinot Noir with a few other, a few other wines in there. Um, you know, as far as Pinot Noir is concerned, especially when we talk about California Pinot Noirs, the color looks pretty good. So, I mean, I would believe that there's only a, a very small percentage of other other grapes than Pinot Noir in here as far as color. So it doesn't look like it's 75% Pinot Noir and 25% Syrah with a lot of extraction on the Syrah and the Pinot to give it a, a darker red color. It's actually pretty pretty light and pretty transparent, so that's good. Um, I know I kind of rag on California for doing that, but you know I've seen a lot of California wines actually be quote varietally correct on color. So um, my guess is that there's a lot of people out there that want Pinot Noir that tastes like Pinot Noir, not Pinot Noir that tastes like Cab or looks like Cab or tastes like Syrah. All right, so um, let's check it out on the nose. Pleasant nose. I get just red fruit right now, but brighter red fruit. A touch of vanilla also. Um, and a little bit of creaminess. So I'm going to guess there's some oak treatment here. You swirl in the air. Can you do two wines at the same time? That's kind of fun. A 
it's pretty, it's pretty light on the nose. Not a whole lot going on there. Let's see how the palette is. It's not bad. It's not too acidic. Um, acid, it's actually kind of medium minus. Um, it's not. It doesn't have the. Doesn't have a bite to it. I've had some Pinot Noirs in this category of eight dollar or ten dollar or less Pinot Noirs that had this kind of bite to them. And I don't mean like, not like a tartness, but like 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 a roughness to them. It doesn't have that. So this is actually kind of nice. Um, it's got a little bit of a creaminess to it. Um, again, with the red fruits. Um, because of the color, I probably would discount it being Cab or Merlot. Um, however, I've had Cabs and Merlots that are, that are really light bodied like this, but this is, you know, it's definitely not a Cab or Merlot. It's a very light bodied wine. This is something you could chill a little bit have on the porch, drink a little bit, um, pair it with some food. I feel like you get some strawberries out of it. Um, I don't really get anything else. I don't really get any like cranberry and like that, but you know, brighter red fruits, a, a real hint of some cream, you know, vanilla, maybe some oak, um, nothing overpowering. doesn't feel hot. You know, it on the website says 13 and a half. It probably is 13 and a half on the bottle here. 13 and a half alcohol. Um, it feels less hot than the Chardonnay as far as alcohol, so I'm probably a little more balanced in my opinion. Um, I would probably rather drink this one. Of course, now, longtime viewers of the show know the irony here. I've just reviewed two wines that I don't normally seek out on my own for personal, for personal consumptions. Does it, consumptions? Consumption. Doesn't mean I don't like Pinot Noir, does not mean I don't like Chardonnay. I just tend to prefer other grape variety or single varietal wines that are, you know, from different grapes. Um, I definitely can enjoy some good Chardonnay, some Pinot Noir, and I have. Um, so with that said, if I had to choose between these two, I would rather drink the Pinot Noir. Um, maybe not on a sweltering hot summer day in Texas. I'd probably go for the Chardonnay, but the Chardonnay has a little bit of a little bit of body to it, a little bit of a little bit of heaviness to it. If I was going to do that, I would probably do a wine that was lighter in style anyway. But, you know, a day like today, it's like in the 70s, 80s. It's it's sunny. Well, it was raining like like anything this morning. Oh, excuse me. It was raining a lot this morning. Now it's turned out pretty nice. Um, you know, I would probably do the uh do the Chardonnay, you know, on the, on the porch. But um, this is very pleasant, very nice. Um, like I said, it's only $8. I, I honestly think I, I like this better as far as a wine and, and its flavor. And for $8, I think, or nine or seven or six, whatever, however you get it, even if it's $10, I don't think you can go wrong with that one, <clears throat> okay? For being a value wine, we're not talking $30, Pinot Noir from Santa Lucia or, or, or Carnero, so it's gonna have a little bit different flavor profile. This is a light, easy drinking wine. Um, if you like it, if you like that style, red, it's not overpowering. Um, you, can, you can pair it with lots of different foods. Uh, you totally could go with that. You know, I had, I had yesterday, I had a salad that was an orange cilantro roasted chicken salad. Um, the char and the chicken, and I was I was drinking actually mostly red wine with it, um, but you could do white wine with that too. This would go this would go just fine. It had like this um, what was the uh, dressing? Uh, I forgot what the dressing was, but um, it was really nice. And I could have drank this with that. I mean, because the chicken with a little bit of a little bit of char on it, you know, a little bit of roast to it, would have been just fine with this. So yeah, if I was gonna if I was gonna choose one of these two, I would choose the Pinot Noir. I mean, I would prefer to drink that absolutely. So I would definitely recommend the Pinot Noir Chardonnay if you like that style of Chardonnay. You're not gonna go wrong with it. Um, yeah. So um, real quick, uh, so this is episode number three that has not been on TiVo. So um, so if you're a TiVo watcher, you're not seeing this. 
Hmm. If you're a TiVo watcher and trying to figure out what's going on, you went to my YouTube channel or went to my website or went to Roku and did the iWine TV app uh, or somehow on Amazon TV, it's I'm on there too, um, through iFood TV, I guess. Um, I guess they have a channel there too. I, I, I don't have an Amazon stick or anything like that. So, um, or you went to Blip or you've subscribed to the podcast. However you had watched it, uh, but you're on T- you normally watch me on TiVo. I am coming back to TiVo. Um, they just need some stuff for me uh, to get me back on. They're changing their web show thing. Uh, it's like the hot list or whatever. So uh, don't, don't fear. I'll be back soon. I don't know how soon. I might be back by this episode, but I doubt it because this episode is coming out on Monday and it's Friday. So they're not going to get me up by then, but... But hopefully the next episode or the episode of that, I will be up and running with uh, TiVo again and all my and all my pro- previous episodes will be there. It's just they're migrating and they needed some they need some artwork from me basically and, and they I guess they can't figure out what the feed is, so I gotta tell them what the feed is. Anyway, uh, that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, next week I will be, or the week that this episode is, I'll be oh no, I'm not going anywhere next week. It's the week after. So next week's episode, uh, I will be, when you watch this, I will be in Fredericksburg at a wine writers conference uh, Tuesday. Well, the conference is Wednesday, Thursday, but I'm going to be there Tuesday through Thursday. I'm coming back to San Antonio on Friday um, because I got to do the day job. And um, so I'll be out there. I'm kind of hoping to maybe do a little uh, wine review out there. I found this great bread bread and breakfast, bed and breakfast. Um, really close to where we're having the conference. Like it's the closest place to, to stay. That's not someone's house. Um, so, and it has this wraparound porch. So if for some reason you're watching this and you're local and you're going to this thing or in Fredericksburg, you know, send me a message because Tuesday night I plan on just kind of sitting on the porch, drinking some wine. Anyone wants to come by, uh, I'm sure after the dinners, both of those nights, um, We'll probably, I'll make the same invitation anyone that wants to come over after the dinner and drink some wine there. Um, and uh, let's see. And so I, I might have a review from that, from that episode or from that, from that, uh, from that trip. We'll see. I'm going to visit Perd and Alice for sure. Uh, they've been great people. If you haven't tried their wines, you got to try them. And then I might probably hit a few other wines. And we're going to visit wineries anyway. But on my own on Tuesday, I'm going to go see uh, uh, David, Julian, uh, Frederick, if, if all three are there. Uh, over at Perdon Alice and uh, say hi to them and have some fantastic wine from them and, and buy some too, just to sip on. All right, so that's going to do it. Uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. Um, click me up, uh, click the fr- click the links above to friend me up. Hit that PayPal button over there to uh, send me a few ducats and uh, we will see everyone again next time.